Hey everyone, so I decided I would film um, the process of how I paint with inks. I'm a creative ambassador for Ferris Wheel Press and they make fountain pen inks and I absolutely adore using them like watercolor. These inks are water-based, they're extremely staining um, and they react beautifully to salt. So I find that the best way to use these is wet on wet. This is just me showing the packaging. It's absolutely beautiful. So this particular color is called Tears of Sapphire and it has a red sheen and it also has some shimmer and it's just an absolutely gorgeous color. So these things work well when it's wet on wet. So I've wet the paper thoroughly and I shake the bottle vigorously so I could, you know, disperse all of the shimmer. So with a wet brush and with wet paper, I take the ink directly from the bottle, plop some down and then work quite quickly to move the ink around. This tends to be extremely staining, so you have to move fairly quick if you want it to look nice and you don't want any harsh lines. So I'm holding the book at an angle, um, as usual, just allowing gravity to help me, um, bringing about some variation in the sky, um, putting down the ink and then moving it around a little. I like the feathery look, but sometimes I like a smoothed out look as well, which is what I'm going for here. And you can kind of coax the ink to flow in the direction that you want it to flow by just moving the book around and holding it at different angles. So now once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some salt on the sky. And I don't plop it down higgledy piggledy. I try to do um, a separate grain of salt at a time because that way I get more texture. I don't just plop like a pinch all in one spot and you know, uh, leave it at that. I try and separate out the grains a little for more exaggerated texture. Once you've fairly covered most of the, the sky, uh, once you're done with uh, sprinkling the salt, you allow this layer to dry completely. So this is a time lapse that I filmed of the salt drying. It's really quite beautiful to watch the textures emerge. Um, so if you have the time, just sit and watch. It's very beautiful to see. Um, otherwise, just set your phone there and you know film a time lapse, and you'll be amazed at how beautiful it looks. It almost looks like the stars are appearing in the sky. I really enjoy this part. So as it's drying, you can opt to put in more uh, bits of salt here and there before the paper is completely dry. So once the salt layer has dried, um, dust off the salt and then now we can go ahead and do the next layer. Um, again, I shake the bottle quite a bit so that I get shimmer in every, every uh, brush stroke. I wet my brush initially and dip my wet brush into the ink and then I decided to go with mountains. Um, this color looks beautiful for mountains. So I put in the first layer of mountains and fairly quickly I try to blend it out. If you can notice, you see the, the lines that are forming. This is filmed in real time, but that's how quickly this ink dries and stains. So you have to make it a point to work really quickly when you're working with this ink, especially if it's uh, wet on dry, which is the case here. So it starts forming very uh, sharp lines, so you have to move a little quickly, add some water quickly to help the ink kind of disperse. And now I dipped in uh, to the ink pot and got a little more um, uh, color straight from the bottle. And I'm picking a shadow side for these mountains and dropping the ink in, in those sections. This looks absolutely beautiful when it dries. This ink has a red sheen. Um, so when you uh, put in 
the ink directly from the bottle, um, I find that those parts are more um, pronounced. You can see the red really clearly when you use undiluted um, ink. Again, this is the color Tears of Sapphire and uh, it's part of the Fairy Tales collection by Ferris Wheel Press. So this is my first layer of mountains. I'm done with this. At this point, I will go ahead and use a hairdryer to dry the first layer. Uh, so it's a quicker process. I can move on to the next layer. This is a very simple composition. I just wanted the color of the ink to stand out. So there aren't too many distracting elements. It's just the sky and some layers of mountains. The paper I'm using here is cold pressed. Um, I find that hot pressed paper also gives excellent results um, with this ink and salt. So pick your poison. If you prefer hot press, you get amazing results on that too. So you could always go ahead and use that. So I'm ready for the next layer of mountains. And if you notice, I'm going ahead and you know shaking the bottle again, just to make sure I get shimmer in this in this round too. Now I'm making the next uh, line of mountain ranges and almost immediately I try and blend it out because this ink dries just so very quickly when you're using it dry, uh, wet on dry. Again, uh, on the shadow side, I'm putting in some uh, more ink straight from the bottle. Just looking for that amazing red sheen that this this particular ink color provides on drying. All I'm doing here is kind of blending things out a little, uh, smoothing out those shadow regions. And anywhere I feel like it, you know, there's insufficient contrast, I go in and add more ink. And I like doing this swoopy motion for my mountains. I feel like it helps build some form. So that's the second layer of mountains done. And at this point, you can use your hairdryer to speed things up and dry off this layer before putting in the final layer. If you were curious at all, the size of this post of this paper is postcard size. So it's A6, it's a, a six by four. As the paper dries and I'm sure you can already tell that there's a red sheen in all of those parts where we dropped an ink fresh from the bottle. The fact that it has red sheen and also the shimmer makes this an absolutely gorgeous color. Again, capping the bottle, shaking it, making sure I can pick up some shimmer and for my final layer as well. The slightly wet brush, I go back into the bottle, take ink straight from the bottle. Uh, the final layer, we want it to be just a silhouette. So um, there's really not going to be a gradient of color. It's just going to be ink straight from the bottle. And all of these mountain shapes are very um, organic. Move your brush around, you know, um, just just go with the flow. This, this cannot really be planned out. And if, it, if something feels off, you can always go back in with more ink and fix the parts that don't really appeal to you. So that's what I'm doing here. There's some edges that I wasn't happy with, so I'm just fixing those. Again, not really planning too much. It is nice uh, to make sure that the edges are all in opposite directions though. Um, so the top mountain range, if you look on the left, it starts on the top and goes down. So the second level starts down and goes up. So that's one thing I do when I paint my mountains, just make sure that the alternating layers uh, don't all go the same way. But that apart, there's nothing really to watch out for. So this is a final layer, a silhouette-like layer, just ink straight from the bottle. And for this piece, I used um, 
for all of my ink pieces. I use my watercolor brushes, they're all synthetic brushes and the ink washes out pretty easily. So um, there's nothing wrong really with using your synthetic brushes. Uh, probably use your less expensive ones um, just to try it out. Uh, but I use my regular brushes and I've not had any issues and I've been doing this for a few months now and I've not had any issues. They rinse out just, just fine. But just make sure you rinse them out as soon as you're done using them. Again, this layer is fully dry and it's time to peel the tape off. The edges are not fully cleaned. This can be fixed with some bleed proof white if you want to, but uh, this was just for a demonstration. So I don't think I'll bother doing that. Now you have it, a beautifully turquoisey mountain range piece. Uh, it's very easy to do. These make create greeting cards, create postcards. It's quick work really with the ink. Um, doesn't take long to build up saturation because ink is just so saturated. Um, and look at the lovely red sheen. It's just so beautiful to look at. And it also has some shimmer. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're able to tell from this video, but it has lovely shimmer. And this is uh, with a different kind of a light. Look at all those beautiful salt textures. So if you find yourself with these uh, Ferris wheel press inks um, and you don't know how to use them, Definitely try using them with salt. I've had great success with it and just can't stop using salt with these inks.